out. One produces this and one produces this. Do you understand? So, you know, we all have to do our part in educating people and not letting them prescribe to an ignorance is bliss philosophy because that's where that philosophy has gotten us, where we are. And I'm scared for us just not understanding the issues, man. Inflation is bad. Cost of living. How can you say it's not when your cost for something that you can't get away from, something you absolutely need, keeps going up? That's going to feel bad. Okay, there's no way around it. That's bad. That means your money is worth less. That means you got to pull a rabbit out of the hat. You either got to increase your numbers, you got to do some fancy footwork, you got to maybe work longer, harder. What it's stressful. It's burden. It's a bad thing, but that's all the only answer the society has. That's a direction we've been going for decades and the only answer they have is keep going that direction. So yeah, I mean, when the Labor Department come, should, should come out every year without fail and say we're adjusting minimum wage. So if it goes down, we're, you know, celebrate it. The masters, the employers could celebrate. Great, man, less burden on us. I got to pay my workers less by law. But there was basis to that because the cost of living to the workers went down. So they're getting more prosperous even though you masters, you employers are paying them less. But we need to address it at that point. And if it, in, if we see a trend happening where year after year, uh, employees, the workers, the servants, ne keep needing cost of living adjustments, keep needing raises, so uh, so the masters say, hey, my labor money, this my servant money is worth less, and I've got a complaint here. And I'm going to say that's wrong. That's hurting me. That's bad for business. That means I can hire less people. So, you know, they'd complain to the Chamber of Communists, right? Good, let's have the discussion at that point. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about the problems and how they can be fixed. What do we need? More housing? Is that what's driving this thing? Is, is that causing a chain reaction? Because people have to pay more just to keep a roof over their head to survive? And say, yes, well, that's obviously it. Say, well, who, who, who profits? Quay Bono. Oh, well, the lenders profit. Um, the um, homeowners profit. Um, the real estate agents profit, um, the builders profit, um, the landlords profit, um, the cities profit because they get more property taxes. So, you know, let's be very clear. Let's spell out, Quay Bono, who benefits from the debasement of your housing dollar. Who started this ball rolling in a bad direction that causes the employees, the workers, the servants to need more money in the first place? Let's talk about who's rigging the markets, who's fixing prices, who's manipulating things. Are we having that discussion? Does the mainstream media do anything to educate you about supply and demand and how it's supposed to work and how it's, you know, defined progress relative to true capitalism, supply and demand, the effects of crony capitalism versus true capitalism? Does the mainstream media lift a finger? No. So they're being controlled. They're under control of the grand puppeteers, those that are the rudder of the ship. The good ship planet Earth. And the last thing these people want is the captives to be set free because they're mean. They're evil people. They're just mean people because they know the system would work if everybody was prosperous. So then that when, they're, when people are finally starting to wake up to that realization that, yes, everybody on the face of the Earth could be prosperous. Nobody at least has to go in want of the basic necessities of life. Okay, once we realize that, then they're already ready with their, the, the next reason. The next rationale for why we've got to deliberately induce poverty, mass poverty on the people and burden them and keep on stealing their wealth, what rightfully belongs to them. And that's because of overpopulation, global climate change, all this. That the, that's it. I mean, they need to call the population to save the earth. So these people are rightfully, they've anointed themselves as the kings of the earth, the smartest, the elitist. So they're the gods of this world. The gods are representing the god of this world. It's all about money and manipulating the masses with the money, the power they're in, the satanic ambrosia. They're very, you understand how we're all being manipulated? And they want us dumb. They want us pliable, manipulable. They want us to believe the way they want us to believe. And the only you could see the end from the beginning. These are insane, mad people. Okay, that's what that's where it's going to lead you. You're going to abandon your conscience, your values. They're making you and they're rendering you in their image and likeness are going to be like theirs. Perverted values, adulterated, unclean, vile. And so, what are you going to? Where are you going to see how your salvation is locked in here? How you believe about economic matters? 
So, you know, hey, man, are you willing that the captives be set free or aren't you? That's the one question I'd ask all humanity if I could. And don't answer to me. Answer to your own soul. Answer to your owner. Okay? Acknowledge that you're owned. Welcome the fear of God in your soul. And love your fellow human being. Do your best to live by the golden rule of treating others the way you want to be treated. Putting God first, of course, because no human being can save your life. But then go f from there, you go out and be humanity's friend as best you can, even to evil people, even people you absolutely abhor. And what they've done is vile, and you'd wring their neck yourself if you could. Even those people were told. That's where the power is. That's where the freedom is. That's where the pure heart is, is in seeing things through God's point of view and then realizing there's a huge cutoff, a departure from the way we see things because of our training. Who have we been trained by? Remember who you've been trained by. Who's got the rudder? Who are the grand puppeteers? A money printing class. The, that's who it is, man. These elitists that watch you. They're open about getting rid of the vast majority of people on earth because we are a blight on the earth in their opinion. So these are enemies of humanity. These are enemies of God. That's who we've gotten our training from. So are you going to accept it from an idealistic God that wants nothing but the best, not for some of his children, but for all of them? Or are you going to listen to these a-holes, evildoers, that have told you that there's no way out, it's overwhelming, the problems are just, uh, just uh, it's every man for himself, you know, that's it, let the weak perish, let them die, it's nature's way of doing things, right? Law of the jungle, right? I get it. So they get you thinking that way, like a brute beast. But where's your soul? Your soul is on the line. They don't own you. You can say, well, they actually do. I got this big fat mortgage and I got, you know, this and that, the next thing, and I need it for, I mean, it's not like God doesn't understand that, you know, you really are scared and that's the driving force behind why you just go with the flow because it's a path of least resistance and you really love money because, hey, you know what? I mean, you'd be an idiot not to love money. It's prosperity. It's it's, it's financial security. That's out of fear. It's financial freedom people give me accolades my children love me because i'm able to share with them do you understand okay god gets it all god sees it all nobody's playing stupid here <laughs> but we need a paradigm where it's universal so it's no big deal yes you're born prosperous but that doesn't mean you need to you know go out and drive a ferrari and every day of the week and you know buy house after house and let them set vacantly Okay, well, we could have whatever we want, extra houses all over the world, taken care of, landscaped, and, and dusted inside, and, you know, this is what we could have, folks, extra superfluity, abundance. That's what we could have if we just take God's advice in this matter, because that's the only place I've gotten my advice, this idea of setting the captives free. Well, it's not partially free. He's talking about absolute freedom. Freedom is kind of an absolute term. So you've got to see the absolute definition of freedom. It's free. It does not cost you anything. So that's the way it should be. In fact, the opposite is true. It should be understood that you you know this wealth has been accumulated by your ancestors that, that came before you, and it, it belongs to you rightfully. It's your inheritance, and that's the why and wherefore. That's the rhyme and the reason. That's the logic behind it, and uh, that's why it is as it is, that you were born with a silver spoon in your mouth like everybody else. It's, yeah, duh, okay, so big deal. We were all born that way. That's right. That's right. So now, how can we make our lives easier? That's what we would ask. So the guys that are out there right now that are picking up dog turds for a living, we're going to come up with innovative new ways to pick up dog turds because you need to do that. Sometimes people own animals and they're disabled and they need help with that sort of thing. So we need to be honest. That's probably about as distasteful a job there is. Though I've cleaned up ex human excrement, I can tell you that's even less desirable. But we'll find easier and easier ways to do this. Do you understand? That would be the net effect. So, you know, uh, I have thought of all the angles on this setting the captives free business, and I still say it's worth a shot. At least it's worth not keep going the other direction because that's all we're doing. You're losing more and more freedom. That's what it does. When your cost of living tax goes up, it's burdensome. It's onerous. 
okay, you are losing freedom. And that's what I'm saying we should not accept. Because even though I'll say, yes, I love America and it's still the best house in a bad neighborhood, okay, I'll admit all that, it's still been going down the tubes for a long time. Our freedom has been suffering, and this loss of freedom of speech recently is just emblematic, indicative of what I'm talking about here. It's just an extension of a manifold loss of freedoms. We're losing freedoms. It's like chain reaction. So, yes, of course, they don't want, you know, so have I been censored? Will I be censored for the things I'm educating people on? Well, they don't like it. They don't like me talking about, you know, Trump supplanting the Federal Reserve, and it should be no big deal. We, the people, ought to have the right. They could put it on the ballot. Or Trump could do it by executive order. So, I mean, yeah, we, the people, would vote to do that and say, well, let's, you know, they've been really wholly incompetent. They're putting our nation in debt to God knows how many trillions, they say. And we're, then they're more than willing. No problem. The, as long as the politicians validate it, legitimize it, the sky's the limit. We'll put you in debt to, uh, you know, a gazillion dollars. Uh, we don't care. And uh, you'll all be serfs and servants and uh, your poor will keep getting poorer and and uh, it'll be impossible for anybody anymore to reach middle class home ownership in America. And we don't care. You're just all going to be our slaves in perpetuity. It's just going to get worse and worse. So lose your will to live. Kill yourself. We don't care. we got plenty of new strong workers to come in. We can ex import in and uh, have them do the job. So if you lose your will to live and commit suicide, we don't care. Or you go die under a bridge because you think you're going to boycott housing and all this. No, we don't care. We got murderers out there that hate people because they had a business and you shit on it, crapped on their doorstep, and so we, um, you know, you got people out there murdering the homeless, you know, and nobody's talking about who created these problems. It's mostly white men out there that are homeless, so it does. There seems to be a, a racial overtone here. What's going on here? How come it's not the immigrant? How do all these people they keep importing people telling you you lack compassion? If you're not for all the immigrants and refugees in the world coming into America, you're a bad person. Even though if you do a, if you commit a crime, they're going to separate you from your kids. Duh. But I just watched Law and Order Criminal Intent. And their whole episode was about this girl that was taken away from her parents. Of course, she was sold into sex trafficking. I don't know how in the hell that happened. Child sex trafficking. They never explained all that. Because she was in charge of the <laughs> some guy from the borders, I, I don't know, you know, child services agency, something like that. But the whole episode, it was all about, you know, and, and Trump, as soon as he got wind of the fact that they were separating the parents, he said, no, I put his foot down on that. But yet they show these children in cages on the show, and they just say how evil anybody that's not for unlimited immigration and let them keep their children... And even though it's a crime, and even though we separate the citizens from their children when they commit a crime, they're not going to bring that up in this episode. You see how deceptive that is, how manipulative that is on your sensibilities, that show? I mean, that is powerful stuff, man. And so, you know, my question is for all these people, wait a minute, you just walked by half a dozen homeless people and thumbed your nose at them, looked at them like they're bad, they're stupid, they're weak, they're evil. You know, they're immoral. There's something wrong. You know, I mean, you need to pull yourself up by that. With that attitude, that spirit as they walk past these people. And uh, and you're going to say, I'm bad because I think that we need to take care of our own native citizens first that are dying out, literally dying out in the cold. While you're willing to spend 50000 a year, at least, per inmate, okay, for rapists, thieves, carjackers, extortionists, murderers, you're willing, as a taxpayer, to pay that for these people, all these criminals. But you're going to say it's okay to let the, the people that can't afford housing, after there's no more welfare, after you're spending $50 billion a year annually on Section 8 housing to, to for, so that housing is affordable to those that can't afford their own housing because of manipulated markets, the social welfare program. Again, who's behind these things? The people at the rudder. Steering things. They're saying, well, now all these jobs are connected. Now the problem, we can't solve the problem. If we did, there's people would be out of a job. So we got to keep this problem going. Only answer, just overwhelm, overwhelm, chaos. And that means our jobs are more secure. We're more relevant by causing all these problems. You see how this thing works, how evil it is? It's truly diabolical. It's truly that evil. So we need to, and, you know, we need to talk about well, how is this desperate poverty being created? buy that 50 billion a year going into section 8 housing what do you think what's inducing the crime in our society 
the vast majority of the crime, as ask any sociologist to tell you, it's because of financial desperation. There's pride involved. There's ego involved. There's people think, hey, I can't be thought of as a failure, so I need to rob a bank. And hey, no explain. You know, I'm just, hey, I'm just good at making money. You know, family, or you know, maybe they were generous with it. Uh, whatever they think, you don't know. I mean, but we don't want to. Um, we don't want to go that route. We don't want to be where we are. And in order to evolve, we've got to get it. It's simple as that. And we can all get it. Our translation of the, reading the Bible is as good as anybody else's. We go to God. The Holy Spirit of Truth is right there for us to, 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 to learn from, to ask the question. It's also called the Counselor, the Great Counselor, you know, the Spirit of Truth. It's right there for all of 